Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. And over the last three videos or so, we've been doing some more longer term technical analysis, doing some more news analysis and more fundamental analysis. And you guys seem to really be enjoying that. So we're going to continue that here on the channel. But for today's video, we do actually have something rather important to talk about here on the short term. Because as we can see here, we're on the hourly chart for Bitcoin. Bitcoin did actually find itself in a consolidation pattern with an uptrend of support right there and a downtrend of resistance right there. And yesterday, in, in yesterday's video, I was talking about how we were likely to see a breakout of this coming over the next 24 hours or so. Well, less than 24 hours later, we see that there has in fact been a breakout and it has actually been a false bullish breakout that turned into a bearish one. As we can see, Bitcoin was trading sideways here, pretended to have a little bullish breakout, but if we look at our volume here, we didn't actually see any real green volume come in. And then after that, what we saw is we saw the actual breakout come in, confirmed and corresponding with this red candlestick here on the volume, proving that we were in fact seeing a bearish breakout for Bitcoin. Now, that's not exactly the end of the world. We haven't seen a very big movement here, but this is actually extremely important when we look at the long-term technical analysis and we come out here to the weekly chart and we see that Bitcoin currently finds itself just above the 200 weekly moving average. This is one of the most important moving averages in Bitcoin technical analysis right now and I don't see enough people talking about it. Bitcoin is threatening to break it and in today's video we're going to talk about whether or not that may be about to happen. So anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you enjoy the kind of content we've been posting on the channel lately, definitely consider dropping that subscribe, dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. I can speak, I know my own intro. Anyway guys, it does help out the channel if you do it, but without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to jump back out here to the weekly chart on the BLX longer term Bitcoin uh, chart, but we're going to go ahead and do the crypto market recap real quick because there is something, there are several things that I want to talk about here actually. The first of which being that the vast majority of the cryptocurrency markets are in the red. We can see every single top 10 cryptocurrency excluding Tether, but Tether doesn't count, and Binance Coin are in the red. Binance Coin has actually been performing very, very well here in 2018 and 2019 during the bear market. You can go and look at a website called ATHCoinIndex.com that will show you the retracement from all-time high value of many cryptocurrencies, and you'll see that Binance Coin has outperformed just about every single other cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, since the bear market started. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Binance has gotten big during the 2018-19 bear market, so it didn't really have a crazy all-time high to deal with like the rest of the cryptos did. But it's also just been doing rather well with large gains as you can see here over the last week as Bitcoin and the rest of the market's been declining, Binance Coin has been doing rather well. That's why Binance is my exchange of choice. Uh, my exchange of choice. One of my, that's one of the reasons Binance is my exchange of choice and why I recommend it to you guys. Anyway, but like I was saying, we can see the vast majority of the market is in the red. Bitcoin's down 1.5% today. Like I said, nothing, not a major move on Bitcoin. But considering how low Bitcoin is in price action, you got to realize that a 1.5% move right now is like a 10% move for Bitcoin when Bitcoin was trading up around $20,000 because the price is so much lower. This does correspond to more important price action, and we are sitting just above some important support like you just saw here on the chart just a second ago. We're going to dive into that in a second, but before that, I want to show you that you know, over the last 24 hours, the market hasn't been doing all that well. We see two double-digit gainers, that being Theta and Binance Coin, but the vast majority of the market, as you can see when we scroll down here, is in the red. Not a great... Oh, excuse me, surprise burp attack. Not a great day for the cryptocurrency markets. Hollow and Pundi X are in the double digit red. Not a whole lot else to talk about here on Bitcoin, on a coin market cap. I did just want to bring up this Binance thing and the fact that the vast majority of the market is in the red today. It's not just Bitcoin. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back onto the chart and start doing some short term technical analysis and then we'll zoom out and do our longer term technical analysis. We're here on the hourly chart for Bitfinex. And as we can see, actually, we need to go to the Coinbase chart because where I have my lines. We can see here that Bitcoin was in this consolidation pattern. We did have a longer term downtrend of resistance. I know I've talked about this in a previous video. I'm going to go ahead and run it through because I think there's going to be some people watching this video who probably haven't seen those videos. As we can see here, we have a nice downtrend of resistance that has been rather well established. We have a touch point up here. This is what I call the pivot point. We have this point down here, which sets the degree of the downtrend to be that. I call this the anchor point. Those are my terms. I've never heard anyone else use those. So if you haven't heard those, that's, that would be why. And then we see that Bitcoin over the last couple of days has been trying to break a bullish out of this. And in the last video, I talked about how you can really prepare for whatever happens with the consolidation pattern. You can have a buy, a buy order right up here. Hopefully you didn't have one right there and get that buy order triggered and then, and then have to uh, have your stop loss trigger down here. I was talking about how when you have a consolidation pattern, you want to have a buy order up above it and a stop loss down below it to stop yourself in case the market uh, goes down and to get in in case the market starts to rally. And that would have even saved you if you had a buy order up here because the stop loss you hopefully still had it there, even though you had bought, was going to protect you if Bitcoin did crash. Because this is something that we've seen happen several times to Bitcoin lately. 
We've seen Bitcoin go into a consolidation pattern. A good example is this one right here. We've seen Bitcoin go bullish out of a consolidation pattern, trade sideways, and then Bart Simpson straight down to the ground and turn very, very red. We saw the same thing happen over here as well. Bitcoin was in a consolidation pattern, turned bullish, Bart Simpson right down, right where it started, even lower perhaps. And this seems to be kind of on a smaller scale what we've seen happen here. Bitcoin was in a consolidation pattern, broke bullish, and then actually changed its mind and broke bearish. And this actually talks about the strength of the bulls and the bears, which is something that I want to talk about in today's video. It's really interesting that we've seen Bitcoin break bearish below four uptrends of support. We've seen Bitcoin do it not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. We've seen Bitcoin break below an uptrend of support, which was trying to move it in the upwards direction. But nevertheless, Bitcoin has not been able to hold those and Bitcoin has instead been rejected by a downtrend and pushed to the downside. And that is rather concerning because what that tends to, that what that leads me to believe anyway, is that the bears are still the ones that are in control. That's obvious. But what it also leads me to believe is that the bears are perhaps stronger than we're giving them credit for because normally what you'll see happen is a market will do something in a cycle of three. We'll see a market do something three times and then reverse. We may see one, two, three three of these patterns and then on the fourth time we break bullish but in fact we've seen a fourth break below this that's not what you want to see coming out of a market like this that's not a good sign and that is a sign in the favor of the bears now that leads us into our next point and that is if the bears are a lot stronger than perhaps we're giving them credit for, then it may be that over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see Bitcoin, or even over the next couple of days, that we may see Bitcoin come down and start testing this downtrend of support and coming down here and actually breaking below it. And if Bitcoin does start coming down here and start moving to the downside and breaks below where we're getting support of around $3,350 right now, as you can see, we have a nice little double bottom being attempt uh, attempting to be formed right here with one touch over there and one touch over there. If we break below this and start moving to the downside, not that much more, then we're going to end up touching that 200 weekly moving average. And that is not going to be a good thing. I mean, we're already very close to it. And if we move much farther, we are going to end up breaching it. As you can see on the BLX uh, chart right here, it's sitting around $3,335, which is not very far from where Bitcoin finds itself. Of course, on this exchange, if we look at Bitcoin here on the Bitfinex chart, we can see that Bitcoin is only like $100 above this level of support. If a whole lot more bearish price action comes in, it doesn't take much, guys, to move below an important level of support. We saw that in, in $6,000 earlier on in the year. Bitcoin didn't really have a catalyst to move below $6,000. It was just time for it to happen. The bears were in control, and the bears pushed us below it. Sometimes an important level of support will just break, and that's what we don't want to see happen. We do not want to see the 200 weekly be broken. This is the 200 daily now. We do not want to see the 200 weekly be broken because the 200 weekly, as I've talked about in many other videos, is honestly one of the most important levels of support that we have right now even more important, I'd say, than $3,000 itself. As I was talking about here, you can see that Bitcoin was kind of just trading sideways, duping the wrong, just kind of doing its thing, and then broke straight below, uh, below $6,000 for not really any reason. There wasn't really a catalyst for this. It was just time for it to be broken. And if that happens and we do go below uh, uh, the 200 weekly moving average, that would be very bad. Let's go ahead and talk about for a second what might happen if we move below the 200 weekly moving average and talk about how that may affect things. Now, I've briefly, I briefly touched on this in previous videos, but I want to talk about it again here since this is the topic of today's video. What would happen if Bitcoin goes below the 200 weekly moving average? Why am I making such a big deal out of this? Well, I'll go ahead and rehash some things, but I'm also going to add some new things. One thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the 2018-2019 bear market has mirrored the 2014-15 bear market point for point. It's almost an exact copy of what's gone on. We've seen that Bitcoin has gone into a bear market, gotten support and approached asymptotically this level of support at $6,000, broken below that, moved 50% below that, and then been 85% uh, retraced from all-time high and started an accumulation phase. That is the market that we're looking at right now. And interestingly enough, that's exactly what happened in, in 2014 and 15. We moved down asymptotically towards a level of support, in this case $300. We broke below it, moving 50% lower than it, entered an accumulation phase, Critically, we stayed above the 200 weekly moving average and we moved to the upside. Now, everything that we're looking at right now suggests that Bitcoin is going to finish this bear market sometime in 2019 and move on into a bull market sometime in 2020. 
But that all hinges on the idea that Bitcoin retains the market structure and repeats the market structure that we saw in 2014 and 15. And in 2014 and 15, Bitcoin never went below the 200 weekly moving average. If Bitcoin goes below the 200 weekly moving average here, we have entered uncharted territory. And if we do that, then there's no guarantee. And I mean, there's no guarantee anyway, but it's much less likely that Bitcoin is going to follow anything else that the 2014-15 bear market does, which throws a lot of our technical analysis out of the window and throws a lot of our certainty of a Bitcoin bull run starting in the next year out the window also. It would be very bad if Bitcoin goes below the 200 weekly moving average because price targets below the 200 weekly moving average are as follows. I've seen a lot of people talk about tw uh, about uh, $2,500. I've seen a lot of people talk about $1,900, even as low as $1,300. And while I do agree with some of those levels of support, especially $1,300, because that's actually the all-time high or around the all-time high of the previous bull run, that doesn't necessarily, that's not exactly a good thing. We don't want to see Bitcoin break below there and move to those levels. I think that that'd be very bad for the Bitcoin market. Now, whether or not it's good for the Bitcoin market is kind of irrelevant. It, it very well may happen, guys. We're sitting above this level. And like I've said in many videos, as I say on the channel and as I say in CT2A, a lot of times when you see a level be tested over and over and over again, eventually it's going to crack. Eventually it's going to break. And, and now this is only the second time in the last several years we're testing the 200 weekly but we're going to see we're going to have to see what happens anyway guys that is what i want to talk about in today's video i wanted to talk about this little uh, this little short term technical analysis and talk about how it actually may be very important for the longer term because if bitcoin continues moving south here it's very possible that we may end up seeing some bad things happen out on the weekly chart that's how important the hourly chart is right now this is the hourly chart we have this double bottom forming if bitcoin breaks this and moves a couple hundred dollars lower that's going to be a breach of the 200 weekly and things really start moving when you see a big level of support get broken you can really turn into a domino effect you can see one thing break and then another thing break and all of a sudden you're trading at half the valuation you were before you started the break. And the last thing I want to see Bitcoin do is go below $3,000 because that would not be healthy for the market. I really don't think it would be. Tell me in the comment section down below what you think of that technical analysis. Do you think the hourly chart is very, very important right now? And do you think it's very important that Bitcoin stay above the 200 weekly moving average? Do you think I'm overblowing that? Do you think I'm blowing that out of proportion? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'm going to be explaining in tomorrow's video. It'll probably be tomorrow's video about why the 200 weekly moving average is so important on the stock market when we do a stock market breakdown and talk about what the stock market crashing could perhaps do to the Bitcoin market. So watch out for that video. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when that premiere goes live tomorrow around this time. But anyway, guys, that is basically going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.